it's me, Teacher Jean. In this lesson, you will learn about properties of real numbers. First, we have the closure property. The sum or product of any real numbers is a real number. For addition, a plus b is equal to real number. For example, 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. For multiplication, a times b is equal to real number. 5 times 3 is equal to 15. 6 times 4 is equal to 24. So here, a and b are considered real numbers. And they are equal to a real number. Second, commutative property. This property states that the order of the addends or factors does not affect the result. For addition, we have a plus b is equal to b plus a. So for example, 12 plus 13 is equal to 13 plus 12. Now to prove it, we just add or get the sum. 12 plus 13, the result is 25. And 13 plus 12 is also equal to 25. Another example, we have 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2. So if we're going to get the sum, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, and 3 plus 2 is also equal to 5. So therefore, the order of the addends does not affect the result. So as you noticed, even we rearrange the addends, still we come up the same answer. For multiplication, a times b is equal to b times a. For example, 8 times 6 is equal to 6 times 8. The product of 8 times 6 is equal to 48. And the product of 6 times 8 is also equal to 48. Another example is 3 times 7 is equal to 7 times 3. So the product of 3 times 7 is equal to 21. And 7 times 3 is also equal to 21. So therefore, the order of the factors does not affect the result. Let's try this one. Write the missing number to make the equation true. Using commutative property, for addition, we have 3 plus the quantity 2 plus 5 is equal to the quantity 2 plus blank plus 3. And the answer is 5. Now to check if that is correct, let's simplify 3 plus 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. Is equal to 7 plus 3. Then get the sum. 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. And 7 plus 3 is also equal to 10. This shows that the order of the addends does not affect the sum. For multiplication, we have 4 times 8 times 7. Is equal to 7 times blank times 8. And the answer is 4. Now to check, let's get the product. 4 times 8 times 7 is equal to 224. And 7 times 4 times 8 is also equal to 224. This shows that the order of the factors does not affect the product. Third, we have associative property. This property states that the grouping of the addends or factors does not affect the result. For addition, we have the quantity a plus b plus c is equal to a plus the quantity of b plus c. So for example, we have the quantity of 12 plus 3 plus 8 is equal to 12 plus the quantity of 3 plus 8. So let's add first what's inside the parentheses. So 12 plus 3 is equal to 15 plus 8 is equal to 12 plus the sum inside the parentheses is 11. Then get the sum. 15 plus 8 is equal to 23, and 12 plus 11 is also equal to 23. So here, in addition, the groupings of the addends does not affect the sum. For multiplication, the quantity a times b times c is equal to a times the quantity b times c. So for example, 8 times the quantity 7 times 9 is equal to the quantity 8 times 7 times 9. Then, 8 times... 7 times 9 is equal to 63 is equal to 8 times 7, we have 56 times 9. Then get the product, 8 times 63 is equal to 504 and 56 times 9 is equal also to 504. So in multiplication, the grouping of the factors does not affect the product. In the examples, we did not change the order of the numbers. We just changed the way the numbers are grouped. 
Let's try this one. Write the missing number that make the equation true. For addition, we have blank plus the quantity 20 plus 14 is equal to the quantity 18 plus 20 plus 14. And the answer is 18. Now let's see if that is correct. We have 18 plus 20 plus 14 is equal to 34. Then 18 plus 20 is equal to 38 plus 14. Then get the sum. 18 plus 34 is equal to 52. And 38 plus 14 is also equal to 52. This shows that the grouping of the addends does not affect the sum. Now for multiplication, the given is 12 times the quantity 5 times blank is equal to the quantity of 12 times 5 times 9. And the answer is 9. Now to check if that is correct, let's perform the operation. We have 12 times the product of 5 times 9 is equal to 45 is equal to the product of 12 times 5 is equal to 60 times 9. Then get the product of 12 times 45 is equal to 540 and 60 times 9 is also equal to 540. This shows that the grouping of the factors does not affect the product. Fourth, we have distributive property. In this property, multiply the factor to the terms inside the quantity, then add or subtract. For addition, we have A times the quantity of B plus C. So here, we're going to distribute or multiply A to the terms inside the parentheses. So A times B is equal to AB, then A times C is equal to AC. For example, we have 3 times the quantity of 6 plus 8. We're going to distribute 3 to the first term 6, so we have 3 times 6. Then we're going to distribute 3 to the second term 8, so we have 3 times 8. Then simplify, we have 3 times 8 is equal to 18, plus 3 times 8 is equal to 24. And the sum is equal to 42. For subtraction, we have A times the quantity of B minus C. We're going to multiply or distribute A to the terms inside the parentheses. So A distribute to the first term, we have AB. A multiplied to the second term, we have negative AC. For example, we have 2 times the quantity of 3N minus 4. So multiply or distribute 2 times the first term 3N. So we have 2 times quantity of 3n. Then multiply 2 to the second term negative 4. We have negative 2 times 4. Then simplify 2 times quantity of 3n. We have 6n. Negative 2 times 4. We have negative 8. Then we cannot combine 6n and negative 8. So that will be the final answer. Let's try this one. Write the missing number to make the equation true. Using distributive property, for addition, we have 5 times the quantity m plus 2 is equal to blank plus 5 times 2. And the answer is 5 times m. Simplify that is equal to 5m plus 5 times 2 is equal to 10. And that is the final answer. Then for subtraction, blank times the quantity y minus 3z is equal to 7 times y minus 7 times the quantity 3z. And the answer is 7. Then simplify 7 times y, we have 7y. Negative 7 times quantity of 3z, we have negative 21z. And that is the final answer. Fifth, we have the identity property. For addition, a plus 0 is equal to 0 plus a, and that is equal to a. For example, 18 plus 0, that is equal to 18. Negative 67 plus 0 is equal to negative 67. So here, the sum of any number and 0 is the given number itself. 0 is the additive identity. So any number added to 0, the answer is the given number. For multiplication, we have a times 1 is equal to 1 times a. And that is equal to a. So for example, we have 53 times 1. The result is 53. Negative 19 times 1. That is equal to negative 19. So here, the product of any number and 1 is the given number itself. 1 is called the multiplicative identity. So any number multiplied by 1, the result is the given number. 
Let's try this one. Write the missing number to make the equation true. Using identity property for addition, first we have 43 plus blank is equal to 43. And the answer is 0. Second, blank plus 0 is equal to negative 14. And the answer is itself. We have negative 14. Now for multiplication, first we have 29 times blank is equal to 29. And the answer is 1. Next, blank times 1 is equal to negative 5 over 9. And the answer is negative 5 over 9. For the last, we have the inverse property. For addition, a plus negative a is equal to 0. For example, 9 plus negative 9 is equal to 0. Negative 13 plus 13 is equal to 0. So here, the sum of a number and its opposite is 0. For any number a, the additive inverse is negative a. So a plus the additive inverse negative a is equal to 0. For multiplication, we have a times 1 over a is equal to 1. For example, 4 times 1 over 4 that is equal to 4 over 4. And 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. Another, we have negative 6 times negative 1 over 6. That is equal to negative 6 over negative 6. So negative 6 divided by negative 6 is equal to positive 1. So here, the product of a number and its multiplicative inverse or reciprocal is 1. For any number a, the multiplicative inverse is 1 over a, where a is not equal to 0. Now, let's try this one. Write the missing number to make the equation true. So using the additive inverse property, 8 plus blank is equal to 0. So the answer is negative 8. The opposite of positive 8 is negative 8. Then negative 49 plus blank is equal to 0. And the opposite of negative 49 is positive 49. And for multiplication, using multiplicative inverse property, blank times 1 over 25 is equal to 1. So the multiplicative inverse inverse of 1 over 25 is 25. So 25 divided by 25, that is equal to 1. And negative 7 times the multiplicative inverse is negative 1 over 7. And the result is 1. Now it's your turn. Do it yourself. Find the missing numbers to make the statements true. Don't forget to comment down below your answer. Happy learning! Thanks for watching. Please like and share. And don't forget to subscribe on my channel and click the bell button so that you will be notified whenever I'm going to upload a new one. Maraming salamat!